wild, wild highlight show of uh, the victory over Montana. We'll discuss that, have a couple of player uh, features, and also preview what's in store for the Ducks when they next take the playing field. And we're not talking about practice so much, but the playing field when they travel to Illinois to take on the fighting Illini. Coach, uh, just a wild game, a game that uh, you appeared to be ready to absolutely dominate and put away midway through the second quarter. But you have to give Montana a tremendous amount of credit. They hung in there and showed a lot of resiliency and guts. And uh, before you know it, with two minutes to play, they're trying an onside kick to get the ball back. Well, Todd, uh, Hudson Stadium uh, certainly is entertaining. And <laughs> anybody that liked offense had to like yesterday's game. Let's set the scene for Saturday's game at Hudson Stadium. Don Reed in his eighth season with the Grizzlies, seven consecutive winning campaigns, formerly the coach at the U of O for three years and was also a head coach at Portland State and Oregon Tech. And when we come back, we'll have the opening kickoff, the home opener for the Ducks as ta they take on the Montana Grizzlies. We are ready for the start of the football game. The toss of the coin was uh, won by Montana. They deferred their decision until the second half, and so Oregon will get the football to start the game. Cool day when uh, things started out. The temperature probably about uh, 60 degrees, but eventually as the day wore on, the clouds broke and the sun came out and it was nice and warm. We don't need to hit those kickoff returns a little harder. First play up the middle to Shedrick and he picks up 14 yards. And a first down, we'll look at it again. Now you'll see a nice block on the bottom by Steve Harden and a good job by Josh Wilcox sealing off the inside. Good straight arm there by Shedrick ripping out of the tackle to pick up about three or four extra yards. Shedrick's been a little busier in the first two games this season than he was last year. Had a career high in rushing in this game. Just nothing but speed there. We were in a position to be uh, tackled in the backfield and Phil Yaw outran the tackler. Now we come with the flea flicker, have it wide open, and Phil Yaw just drops what would have probably been a short touchdown right through his hands. And so the Ducks regroup, second down play, back to Shedrick, good hard running, gains eight. Nice trap play up the middle there. Another run up the middle, and you can see we're controlling the inside of the line of scrimmage. Uh, we did not want to make this a game where we just handed the ball off and tried to take advantage of our size. We wanted to try to use, utilize our entire offense Nice run here by Shedrick, shedding tackles. Whittle down there trying to help him. <laughs> Getting the block. It's good to see Ricky back in the lineup it this week. It really is. Next play we see is a third down and 10 from the Montana 33-yard line. Nice timing route there on a 12-yard completion. We pick up the blitz inside. Nice pass protection. You can see uh, Shedrick step up. Pick up the block there. Nice uh, pocket for O'Neill to step up into. And our pass protection, I believe, improved. We were sacked one time on a blitz that really uh, was probably the quarterback's fault for not recognizing the blitz and throwing hot off of it. Second down and 15 play. Phil Yaw. Ooh, ripped that leg out of there. Tried uh, very hard dragging uh, the tackler. But nice catch. Uh, out of the backfield, you see on the low replay, right ground level, you can see the ball thrown perfectly right to Phil Yaw, turns around, getting a good uh, good block out there, attempted block by Corey Murphy, should have stayed on it a little longer, and then Phil Yaw might have been able to pop that for more yards. And then on a second and 13 from the Montana 14-yard line, the first drive of the game, O'Neill to Deadweiler for the touchdown, and that completes a drive of 82 yards, 13 plays, and gives Oregon the lead, and that is our play of the day. Well, Todd, that was a, a similar play to the one that we ran uh, last week at Colorado State, only uh, this time Deadweiler was over on the right-hand side, and that was the primary receiving side. We had uh, our tailback split out here. Shedrick was in the backfield blocking, tight end set left, and it's just a three-step quick, quick slant pattern, both sides slanting, both outside guys and both inside receivers running out routes. And O'Neill drops back, and we catch them in a zone. And uh, Deadweiler hits right in the middle of the zone between the corner and the safety, and O'Neill throws it right on the money for the six points. Okay, let's take another look at it. You can see O'Neill looking to the right. Boom, ball's in there.
corners on the outside, safeties on the inside, zone defense. We found the seam in the zone. And the touchdown, the first of the game, Tommy Thompson into attempt and convert on the extra point. And Oregon leads Montana 7-0. We've played about four and a half minutes of this game. There's uh, one of the many, many, many sloppy missed tackles. Should have had him stone cold for a sack early in the game. We give it up. You can see Ernest Jones coming in from the top. And we miss another one there with Salila Malapiai. He scrambles out of there. And finally, barely, we make the tackle, David Massey. And the quarterback is Wilberger at this time, a loss of two on the sack. Second down and 12. And to try to slow down that pass rush, the Grizzlies go to the draw. Bends through to gets a first down and a gain of 16. Terrible, terrible tackling. That usually means you're not really ready to play the game. Screen pass here. Nice job on this one by Eugene Jackson, reading the screen and coming up and making the tackle for a loss. Our emotional level should have been higher. We weren't quite as ready to play as we uh, should have been. Everybody uh, talking about what an easy game it was going to be for the Ducks, and uh, it obviously turned out to be a very difficult one. So Oregon forces the punt in. Gets the football back at its own 26-yard line. O'Neill immediately to the air to Kristen McLemore. Heads up field and picks up 20. On the replay, you can see an excellent pass blocking again. O'Neill looking to the right, comes back to his left, looks the coverage off, and McLemore takes it up inside for a first down. So we're midway through the first quarter. Oregon leading Montana 7 to nothing. Ball is now at the midfield stripe. On a second down and six play. Nice block here by Shedrick. Filia cuts it in, cuts it out, and runs real hard. I'd, I'd like to see him run that aggressively all the time. Lowered his shoulder at the end of the run. Nice job here. Shedrick kicks out. Mike DeFonzo pulls around, seals the backer inside, and Phil Yaw lowers the shoulder, boom, and picks up a couple extra hard yards there. Good strong running. So, second down, that play. Now it's first down and 10. Shedrick, once again, trying to find something in there. Pick up those feet. Pick up those feet. Get in there for about a four to five yard gain. Play action pass now. Neil back to throw over the middle, wide open. Derek Deadweiler and picks up a big first down deep in Montana territory. 23-yard gain. See on the play action again, faking the ball to the tailback, excellent pass protection, a lot of time to throw on this one, and Derek on the crossing route from right to left, comes underneath the safeties, makes a nice run there, picking up about six yards after, I guess other people can miss tackles too, but I'm not very happy when we do. <laughs> first and 10 now at the Montana 11, Oregon seeking its second straight touchdown of the game. This was Ricky's first carry of the day, and I mean, it only went for five yards, but he showed a lot it's right there. It's an exciting five yards, wasn't it? <laughs> it was. Huh? I think he's healthy. Wow, I tell See you what, the cuts? knee held up pretty yeah, good, didn't it? Really it really did. And a uh, nice catch there by Kristen McLemore. <laughs> Kept his balance, learned his lesson from last week. As you can see, a nice job of pass protection again, and a little delay route over the middle to Kristen McLemore. Gets bumped, almost loses. It would be kind of embarrassing to fall on your back after you've uh, scored a touchdown. Or so. even worse, to get called for celebrating there. Yes, yes. <laughs> so the touchdown, O'Neill's second of the day, McLemore's second of the season, and Oregon goes 74 yards in eight plays and now leads 14 to nothing. And this looked like what a lot of people thought this game was going to be. And then I think our players started to think it was. And then here we go again. Look at all this wonderful tackling. Wilberger scramble, gain of 14, but the drive then stalls down as the defense finally does get to Wilberger here. Ernest Jones comes through and an 11-yard loss on the sack. That's what's supposed to happen when you bring pressure and they don't have anybody to block you. If not, they have to get rid of it quicker 
But uh, as the game wears on, we run right by him on some of these blitzes. You can see Ernest gets there first. Bingo, big sack. We should have had about eight or nine of those in the second half uh, that we looked pretty foolish on missing the tackles. So that's a big loss. It's now third down and 16. Wilberger in his uh, final series finds Scott Guernsey right here. And that sets up a fourth down and three. They're at your 34. They're down by 14 points. I don't think there was much doubt in Don Reed's mind. No, he was going to go for it. They were rolling the dice all day long. This one wasn't any different. And a little zone defense there. Jeremy Asher coming out. And the receiver uh, couldn't get a handle on him. And so that ends the first quarter of play as Oregon is leading Montana 14 to nothing. Ready for the start of the second quarter. Oregon dominating the first 15 minutes of play, leading it 14 to nothing. And as we pick up the second quarter, Oregon has the football back and very quickly puts it in the end zone again. Under pressure on this one, Corey Murphy does a great job shielding the defender with his body while he goes up and cradles the ball in for a 44-yard reception. You can see that we break down on our protection a little bit on the backside, and O'Neill has to get rid of this a little quicker than he'd like, and he gets hit just as he released it, which took a little bit off of it. And Corey, nice shot by the camera here. Shields his, shields his defender off of him and goes up and makes a nice catch. A gain of 44 and a first down to the Montana 18. Well, O'Neill liked Corey on one play, so he says, I'll go back to him. And why not? Gain of 14 and a first down. And a fumble out of bounds, fortunately. Got to protect that football. A sprint out this time. We come to the perimeter. And O'Neill finds Corey Murphy on the out route. Corey spins back inside. It looked a little bit like our tackling, that one that flew by. First there, one? Didn't it? Yeah. Quick receivers are hard to tackle yeah. in the open field, though. They and really they're are. short. You don't have a lot yeah. to work with there, right? Yeah. First well, and goal at the four. Let's think we can think of some more excuses. <laughs> Dino Filia. Around the corner, nice block again by Juan Shedrick, kicking out the force. Filia cuts up inside, breaks back outside. Now watch, uh, Mitch Signer gets a good block, but here's, here's the block that springs it. Inside, back outside, Eric Barnes also leading out there. And uh, Dino Filia's first and hopefully not last touchdown at the University of Oregon. So with a point after, a 66-yard drive in only four plays, and it's 21 to nothing. And we've only played 38 seconds of the second quarter. I think our players started to relax at this point a little bit. Uh, nice job there by Massey and Asher and uh, Salila Malapiai. New quarterback in there now. Dickinson is in the game on a third down and nine play. You see David Massey makes the first hit and gets a lot of help. Ernest Jones is well in on that tackle. On that third down play coming up here, Dickinson will uh, throw an incomplete pass, and that'll set up a fourth down play. See Good pass. pressure there by Ernest Jones, almost intercepted. And now they run the uh, fake punt on us. They're going to run and slip uh, the up back out, throw him a little pass. Don't quite get to him. And a big, big play here. Uh, nice job by Camille Stone catching uh, the receiver from behind so as to not allow a big touchdown. Now they're in the scoring position, but your defense comes up big here. Nice job there by Dante Lewis. And then on fourth and one. Big play, big play on fourth and one. Romeo Bandison, Ernest Jones, Jeremy Asher, Salila Malapiai. Nice play. You see the penetration there. Malapiai and Bandison in the backfield. Now Jones is grabbing from behind and pulling back, and they just get the pile moving in the right direction for us. So Oregon takes over at their own 28-yard line, trying to score for the fourth consecutive drive. And it starts off on a good note. Ricky Whittle. Takes the play and bounces it outside and picks up 17 yards. This is the way it was supposed to be, right? Doesn't stay this way much longer, does it? Uh, everybody bunched up inside. Ricky just uses his speed to break it outside. And 
picks up a couple extra yards before going out of bounds. After an illegal procedure penalty, the Ducks now faced with first and 15 at their own 40-yard line. O'Neal, a little delay to Josh Wilcox. Real, uh, playing some real good football for a redshirt freshman. Dave Wilcox's son, obviously, who has a pretty good uh, heritage uh, coming out of that family. And uh, Josh is doing some outstanding playing for a freshman and picks up a nice play on the tight end delay pass. We move to further action in this drive. It's second down and nine for Oregon. Ricky Whittle. Little delay. And almost gets the first down. A little short. It ends up being a fourth down and three. And you attempt to go for a 55-yard field goal. 55-yard field goal. I thought the wind was uh, at our back. It was at, at the start of the uh, quarter, but I think the wind was actually had, had turned and come into our face a little bit. And that was a little wide left and also just a hair short. And now things start to change. Good defense there by Molden, but they flag him for interference. I thought for a while they might be calling offensive I, I pass so interference too. on that, but uh, apparently uh, they didn't see it that way. Now here's what you're talking about. He gets it away and a great defense by Molden again. Nice job there by Alex. Good pressure, but again the ball was unloaded. And this one is real tough. We finally get a sack. That's not the one I'm thinking about. That one will be coming up. Nice job by Bandison on that one. See, uh, we finally get some pressure coming up, forcing the quarterback to step up inside. And Bandison comes in and gets him down with some help. There's also a holding play called on that one. So it's, a, in essence, a 20-yard penalty. So it's second and goal from the 29. Look at this little guy. A lot of time to throw on that one. Quick receiver going across the field and taken out by Isaac Walker. So it's uh, going to be short of the goal line, and after an incomplete pass, Andy Larson comes in for Montana and gives the Grizzlies their first points of the game. It's 21 to 3, five minutes to play in the second quarter. Well, your offense comes right back out on the field. You've moved the ball in all four possessions, and you do it again in the fifth possession. Fill you off a good, hard running. So he picks up 14 yards and a first down. It's an excellent job. Uh, Dave Cottrell comes along, gets a block. Willie Reif in there at the tackle. But a real nice run right there by Filia. Now exploded up the field. Use your speed. Needs to be a little more decisive on his inside running. But it's still a very, very nice run. Ball at the 45. Mixing it up, O'Neal. Pressured. Great job getting that pass off. Uh, not much room in the pocket. He found the soft area that was in the pocket and was able to step up and get the pass off. You can see they're bringing heat. They're in a blitz. Phil Yaw picks up the backside poorly, and the pressure is there, but O'Neal quickly releases the ball and gets it to McLemore on the crossing route for the first down. Well, they bring heat again on a second and nine play, and this time O'Neal manages to get this one off as well, and it ends up being a touchdown. You bring pressure, O'Neal under pressure, gets hit just as he throws it. The ball flutters out there. Murphy comes back. I thought he was going to fall down trying to catch it. Nice job by Corey Murphy for his first touchdown. You can see here comes pressure. O'Neal kind of threw off his heels. Didn't get enough on it, but Corey was so wide open uh, that he came back and almost fair caught it before he took it into the end zone. So it's 28 to three. And with only three minutes left to play in the second quarter, it's like a pretty comfortable lead at this point. But then uh, Montana comes back with a nice two minute drill, two plus minutes really, to get a touchdown. I thought it was a, a big drive for them. Uh, they needed some confidence and- uh, It started with terrible kickoff coverage on our part, allowing Montana to get an excellent return here. Sloppy tackling again, and look at this. We give them tremendous field position. Run down by Grady O'Connor. Now they start on our side of the 50-yard line. <clears throat> Go deep, 
almost intercepted by Alex Molden. He's had several near misses in his first two games. I'm sure that he'll be making some as the season goes along. This one was nice. Brian Rockwell, we finally got a sack on him. Unfortunately. Yes, unfortunately. <laughs> it didn't do a lot of good because they, uh, they come back. Here's the sack again. Here he comes unmolested. This is what's supposed to happen. You're supposed to make that tackle. He almost ducked under that one. And uh, that will just give us a little preview of what's to come. <laughs> like right here. Like right here. We have him. We don't have him. He's down. Touchdown. Well, son of a gun was tough. Very quick. Very, very quick. They missed the extra point. It's 28 to 9 at the half. All right, Oregon fans, put on those uh, seat belts because we're on, in for a rocky ride here in the third and the fourth quarter. Here we go. 28 9, Oregon leading at the half. Kickoff to start the second half. Pretty good coverage here uh, on the kickoff for you. Much better than uh, what we had anticipated on our last one. And uh, nice job again by Dan Mead, who become kind of a pretty substantial guy in our kickoff coverage. A little screen pass out in the flat. We react very well to that. Williams and Asher. Excellent job of defense in this play. You can see a nice job out there. Romeo Bandison also smelling it out getting out there to make the tackle. Third and eight. Big play here. Uh, we get matched up. Jeremy Asher uh, on a receiver. Takes him deep. Re actually had good coverage. It was a perfect throw and a great catch. And yeah, they call pat or, uh, roughing the passer here. And that gives Montana first down. It keeps the drive Big, going. big play here, obviously, because we had the ball. We'd have had possession. Here we go. Missing tackles again. And... Uh, Miss a lot more. Ugly, 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 ugly. Exactly. That play probably best exemplifies what happened. Now, now this one really disturbed me, Todd, because uh, it's interesting that the uh, referee can call timeout when the ball's in the air. You know, just really interested on that. Anyway, we get the ball back now and. Uh, Nice run there by Derek Deadwater. Excellent run. Terrific effort. So you come back. Little loud pattern to uh, Deadwater, and boy, he turns it on. It's just a little hitch pass, and uh, just a, a great effort on the run. And uh, another reason that he needs to have the ball in his hands uh, as much as we can get it there. Because oh, look at there. pulling him for a couple yeah. more yards. A little assistance by Big Eric on that one. So first and 10 of the Montana 43. A little reverse on this. Uh, wish he'd have just kept running around the corner. I think he had the corner turn, but last week he went outside and he should have gone inside. So I think he's just thinking rather than reacting. And uh, Danny O'Neill scrambles for a couple of yards before being tackled. So it's third down and 15. 28-16, Oregon with the lead. O'Neal looking deep, and uh, Dino got turned around a little bit. Did. The uh, ball could have been thrown better, but also the ball could have been caught. Uh, tough uh, tough catch, but it, it could have been caught. Talk about the improving in the special teams area, at least in the punt coverage. It did a good job here. Nice job by Jeremy Asher, Paul Jensen, and Mike Allison down there covering that punt to stick them deep. But uh, here we go again. They get called for holding on this play. But you can see we're still missing tackles and allowing them to run around back there and put a lot of pressure on our coverage people. Second down and 19, and what if, oh, it could have been right here. Hit David in a bad place. He's not real happy about it. Uh, hit him right in the hands. Third and 19. You do not see this very often nowadays in college football. And an extremely well-executed quick kick. Uh, good decision by uh, Dante to get away from that, but they get themselves out of a deep hole. So Montana has scored in this quarter, but Oregon still leads by 12. Well, into the fourth quarter we go. Uh, Oregon still with what seems to be a comfortable 12-point lead, and your offense comes back on the field, uh, having not put any points on the board in the third quarter, but they sure do on this first drive. Nice out route to uh, Corey Murphy again, uh, sprinting to the corner on this one. A lot of time to throw. Nice pass to uh, Corey Murphy. Good coverage by Montana, making the tackle just after the catch. 
Second down play here from the 37. Another tight end delay pass to Josh Wilcox. Picks up a nice gain over the middle. Third down and two. Need that first down, and Ricky Whittle gets a couple of tough yards inside. Powered it up in there real good. Uh, picked it up by about a foot. Ooh, had a little trouble handling the snap there. Kind of juggled the ball, got in, up in there and got in Shedrick's way. Uh, nice run, though. He's uh, an exciting runner. And it was good to get him in this game to get some of that timing back. We saw that he uh, almost dropped the pitch, uh, runs up into the, exactly. the blockers. Big trap play here. Mike Defonso gets the trap block. Steve Harden gets the linebacker, and I'm not sure Shedrick's seen that kind of daylight running room. <laughs> nice big run by uh, Juan Shedrick. Kulu Malapii now in at the fullback, picks up four. O'Neal on the quick pass to McLemore, picks up the first down. You can see quick pass, ground level, quick drop. Put the ball away, Corey. Swinging it around. We better get him to tuck it away. So a gain of 10. Come back to Josh Wilcox. Josh, uh, nice reception there. One of four on the day. Nice quick pass to the tight end. And a great run here by Ricky Whittle. Straight arm, dive for the pylon, and gets it into the end zone. Another block by Shedrick, kicking out the force. Whittle turns it up. Stiff arms the Montana tackler and dives for the pylon. Great effort by Ricky Whittle. So the point after is good, and Oregon has marched 74 yards in 13 plays to lead 35-16 with 9.45 left to play. Yep, there comes Montana right back down the field. Big catch over the middle by Matt Wells of Ashland, a gain of 18 and a first down. Tackled by Chad Cota of Ashland. A good friends. And again, Rich Rule comes too flat on the blitz. We miss the sack. They get a big first down, down at the five. Quarterback draw here, touchdown. They go 82 yards in eight plays. It's 35 to 23. Get a big spark, though, on the kickoff return by Ricky Whittle. We have our hands team in there, and Ricky just does a great job hitting it hard like all kickoff returners should do and I think uh, he's earned a spot on the kickoff return for the Illinois game there you go you see a, a squib kick Ricky picks it up we've got uh, 10 people up front protecting for the onside kick and Ricky just kind of takes it gets a gets a block from Dino Filia. Tony Graziani in. Malapai diving in towards the end zone. The ball comes loose. You know, it almost looked like the guy came out of the end zone a little bit, too. It was a lot of confusion on this play. Well, there was. Good, good clean handoff. Kulu has the ball. Goes in. Looks like he's down. Now the ball comes out late. They pick it up, try to run it out. They don't get it out. Should have had him get it on about the one yard line, but uh, now they're going to get it clear out on the 20 because uh, you can attempt to run it out, mm -hmm. Todd, and if you don't get it out, it's a, still a touchback. But on the third and goal, scrambling around again, and finds Earhart for the touchdown. 35 to 30. All right, we'll have our special Where Are They Now feature next week when we see you. Until then, for the coach, I'm Todd McKim. Goodbye. The Rich Brooks Show.